Uh, I'll start by introducing myself. I'm Sagi, I'm part of the Salesforce Business Group. And when Thomas approached me to talk about sustainability and AI, I felt like, cool, I've done something right because people notice me for these two topics. Bit of a background, I'm a civil engineer, have nothing to do with technology. And I was so scared of doing C++ in my university, I kept postponing it until my third year. I was horribly terrified of it. And then when I took it, I was like, crap, I should've taken it first semester and changed, <laughs> changed majors. But I didn't. So I kind of soldiered through civil engineering, which got me way more passions than I expected. First one was sustainability. We are forced, forced in French systems to take a course on sustainability, environmental engineering, how we kind of fix the world, and that was back in 2012, 13. And then when I took C++, that opened another world for me, and I kept taking more and more um, computer science majors, and that got me into liking AI. So I also took later on a specialization in AI and data science, not much people know this, but in my previous job, I was the SME for AI at that company in terms of selling it, and here I kind of found myself stumbling into sustainability. So I keep kind of turning into these circles. But what I keep talking about in every single pitch with news is how amazing AI with sustainability is. What if analysis, you really need it, you, you have to pay for it. But I never talk about what it actually does on the flip side. No one ever talks about it, you never hear about it. We hear AI helps sustainability. But what does it do on the flip side? Does it actually always help it? I mean, it's, it's no wonder to anyone that AI has revolutionized the world. I mean, we've been talking about it so far today. I think it's sunk in enough. Chat GPT, chat GPT, chat GPT. Everyone knows that it's revolutionized how we're looking at the world. It is now what was previously the impossible now is very much possible to my nine-year-old niece. Another thing. Siri and Alexa, they're household names. Like, literally my nephew talks to Siri probably more than he talks to me. So, so they know who that is. My partner, however, doesn't like them because they're always listening, which is true, actually. They are always listening. But even more so, recently, there's a law that passed in the UK, correct me if I'm wrong, but it allowed public use, as of next year, of self-driving cars. Now, there's a caveat, it's not supposed to drive itself, but you're, you can put it on autopilot. That passed. And all of this seems very fancy. We look at AI and we think, God, it's such an expensive, brilliant, out-of-this-world tool. It's not really, it's sitting in your phone right now. It's, it's your phone. AI is very accessible to us, we just don't think of it. AI is a LinkedIn post sponsored for you. AI is your Amazon recommendations in your cart. It's not really, it's really not that sophisticated if you think of how easily accessible it is to us today. But what we don't see is that AI has a very, very dark secret that no one knows about. And it is that it, it uses up massive amounts of energy, huge. And that is to train it and to just get it running and train it again and get it running. Like Thomas said, 10,000 10, times you keep training it and make it, just think of how much energy that's using. But, I mean, I, don't, I didn't know what the carbon footprint of AI is, and I, I asked around, no one knows it. I was talking to Thomas, he was like, that would be, that'd be an interesting to, uh, topic to talk about. I'm like, Google, what is the carbon footprint of AI? Google couldn't tell me. So I went to the tool that everyone's talking about nowadays that probably can answer any question. <laughs> And I said, okay, I have the chance to chat GPT, right? So I said, hello, chat GPT, because my mom raised me to be polite. So I have a question for you today. Do you know your own carbon footprint? I expected like a six-figure number, but I didn't expect that. It said, as an AI language, I don't have a carbon footprint in the traditional sense since I don't consume any physical resources. Okay, the servers and the AI centers that power my operations do have a carbon footprint. These servers and data centers are powered by electricity, and the sources can have varying carbon intensity. Sure, that being said, disclaimer, many organizations are doing their best to improve on their sustainability practices. Yeah, I know, I work for Accenture. But that doesn't tell me much. So I asked it again. Can you tell me an exact number of how much carbon emissions your machine learning training model makes? Give me a longer answer. <laughs> As an AI language, I don't have a direct control over the infrastructure. Yeah, I get it. I know it's not your fault, but can you give me an answer? 
The carbon footprint of an AI language model like myself depends on, yes, yes, various models, but this is where it got interesting. However, some estimates suggest that the carbon footprint of training large AI models like GPT-3, uh, its predecessor, <coughs> could be in the range of several hundred tons of carbon dioxide equivalent emissions. I'll read that again. Several hundred tons of carbon equivalent emissions or more, depending on the scale and duration of training costs. Then it went on to tell me again that, you know, we're trying our best. Really, we're, we're trying to be great. Yes, I know. And for a tool that is claiming to know a lot, it sure can answer a question, a simple question about itself. Like, what, what is your carbon footprint? I can answer that, I think. But the AI industry is often compared to the oil industry. That's not top of your mind. You wouldn't think of that. Why? Because like oil, data, when it's mined and refined, can be a very hot and lucrative commodity. That makes sense, doesn't it? Another thing we don't think about, how similar they are, it's not surface value, you know, okay, I just told you that, but it's even deeper. The AI industry, its deep learning processes, like fossil fuels, use up a massive amount of, of environmental impact, and the difference, though, is we don't know about this. We don't know about the oil industry, we don't know about AI. As we move towards a world where we are using AI front and center, it's in our phones and we don't even notice it. This is becoming a major, major problem. Okay, what are your numbers? Can you tell me your numbers? And the more we move towards cloud, the more this impact kind of becomes invisible. Like if I were to ask anyone, that would, be, would have been me a couple, not even that much years ago. Green AI, what is that? Green cloud, what's that? It can't cloud be green, I mean it's a cloud. It's in the cloud. I'm pretty sure almost everyone here about technology, but ask someone the strategy. This cloud doesn't exist, does it? It becomes transparent. We don't think what, it, what the impact of it is because it's not here. It's not here. I can't touch the cloud like I can touch, like I can touch a laptop. But to counteract that, here are some tangible numbers. MIT reported that the cloud now has a larger carbon footprint than the entire airline industry. That is one industry we give a lot of flack to. <laughs> That's like, don't travel a lot. Take your holiday here, like in, in, in Fun or something. Don't travel, it's really bad. <laughs> no one tells you don't try ChatGPT. No one tells you uh, don't run Einstein. Quite, quite the opposite. Yeah, like, That's a good <laughs> <laughs> Another Another fact is a single data center might consume an amount of electricity equivalent to 50,000 homes, one data center. That's American homes. They use up a lot more energy than we do, but still the fact applies. I just want you to kind of let this sink in, and I'll hit you with more numbers. There was another study done at the University of Massachusetts. This says MIT Tech Review because I'm a subscriber and I get that stuff, but it's from the University of Massachusetts, and it studied a training a single, simple data model, AI model. And they found out that it uses up the amount of energy equivalent to five fuel cars in your lifetime. Now that same study released that they are telling us, normally a paper-worthy AI would use up, or would need, more than 4,700 models to be trained, to be paper-worthy, over a six-month period. So I said one, model, five cars. I'm not gonna ask you to do the math. Look something like this, <laughs> even more. So that number is a lot. I don't need to tell you that that number is a lot. It's even more when I look at this graph and I realize that the AI industry is just kind of going up ex exceptionally fast. And this is from someone who was on the newsletter waiting in for me journey and all, the, all these new AIs. I love this stuff. But it's good to know that this is what it's costing me in the background. AI is extremely front and center now in our lives. It's moving forward, it's not stopping. And in a world where it's just, it's a train that's moving, there's no stopping it, it's very important that we actually know and we're very transparent on what that is costing us. And as Sandri Plotter, Global Lead of Technology Sustainability Innovation at Accenture, put it, Nowadays, the exponential growth 
in how much data we're gathering, the exponential increase in how much energy we're using to train these AIs might actually end up counteracting, if not just stopping, all the effort we're making to combat or reverse climate change. So what are we doing? Do we know what we're doing? But I'm not just here to give you a problem and just be like, have a good evening, sleep, have nightmares. <laughs> what can we do? <laughs> what can we do? We work for one of the most climate active enterprises in the world. What can we do? We advise some of the biggest enterprises in the world. What can we do? I give you four things we are able to do. First, accurate measurement of environmental impact. Now, as I just asked my friend ChatGPT, and he couldn't tell me, he, why did I just? It couldn't tell me <laughs> what the carbon footprint is. If we're more prone to measure environmental impact, if we ask our clients to use tools like, I'm not going to say mine first, Microsoft Cloud for Sustainability and Net Zero Cloud from Salesforce, if we ask them to use these tools more often, then it will become more trans transparent. Okay, what is your carbon footprint? they will themselves be able to visualize what is their carbon footprint, where are they doing missteps, what is the problem and how can we start it. And then they can start improving on their facilities, water consum consumption, changing fleets, all that stuff. Number two, estimation of AI models carbon footprint. There are tools out there called the, one in particular called the Machine Learning Estimation Calculator. It is built for AI researchers and they can simply go into that tool and put in cloud provider, geographic location, the hardware they're using. And that calculator will pump out a number that ChatGPT can give me, which is their carbon footprint for that particular AI model. And they need to be asked to use it more often. If that data is available for us, it's transparent, then we are able to understand, okay, that's my impact, and they will be asked to answer for it. Number three. Assessment and improvement of how and where data is stored. As we just saw, one data facility, massive, massive amounts of carbon. Data facilities take up so much energy, and this is when you say the cloud, that's basically what we're talking about. The cloud exists, it's a data center, right? And data centers usually take up a blotch on Google Map. They're huge, they take up so much heat, they produce so much heat, take up so much energy. So enterprises, we should encourage them to look into relocating their data centers to more geographically green locations. For example, France uses nuclear energy. Uh, Montreal uh, in Canada, they power their data facilities with hydroelectricity. And you might want to tell me, okay, Sadia, but that's a very expensive thing to ask our clients. They can just change, change supplier for electricity. True, that might be available for them, but reiterating, when you look at how big the amount of energy they need is, then you might actually think, okay, but there is no local provider who can give that to them. So it might be just better to just move your data facility to a place where that's available for you. And last, we want transparency in reporting of carbon emissions. So nowadays when your research is done on AI model and you publish it, you are asked to put in accuracy measures and how good it is and performance metrics. And that is what we say is a good AI. It's a bad AI. It has 98% accuracy. We just need one more. We should ask researchers and require it for them to publish, okay, but what is the carbon footprint of that model that you're releasing? Because the more this becomes transparent, when it becomes required of them, it becomes also socially required of them to look at these numbers. It becomes, given time, also a requirement for success. Is it a good or a bad model? Now it's metrics, soon enough it will be, okay, it's this much carbon, is it a good or a bad model? So we should ask them, and it should be required for it to be published so that we know what is the impact that we have. Clearly, I'm not asking each and every one of you to do this. This is, this is not something like stopping eating meat, turning off a light, this is bigger. But we are part of Accenture, and it is one of the biggest enterprises in the world. It is one of the most flamboyant about trying to do climate action. And we advise some of the biggest companies in the world. So in this world where everything is going towards AI, the society is being pushed. I'm here preaching carbon footprint, but I am using AI very actively. It is very important that we remind ourselves of the impact that this has. Think of the nuclear uh, bomb. 
I said, I don't want to do that, but it has repercussions, right? So we need to remind ourselves and remind our clients and as one of the biggest and most flamboyant enterprises with purple and let there be change, it is our responsibility to influence the AI agenda and to influence our clients to make better decisions. Otherwise, the world we're looking to build, this tool that we think will get us there, will be our downfall. The damage that it can cause to our agendas towards changing climate change can be not reversible. 